Hi, and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Profits YouTube page. So last video, we talked a bit about the greatest single season fantasy players and what they could do in one year. But today we want to talk about another similar topic, and that is what players have been able to put together the best single game performances. This is kind of fun. In fact, all of these guys on this list uh, were so good in that one game that they could pretty much win you your fantasy game by themselves if you didn't start anyone else. I mean, that's how great they are. But we'll get to that. Rob, as always, I want to give you the chance to say something before we get started. Yeah, you know, we talked about that one player in our previous video that had such a great career year, like a Daniel Thomason year that he had 31 TDs that, yeah, him alone, he really carried your team. If you had him on your team, you went far in the playoffs, pretty good chance you won the fantasy championship. And so uh, just like a player can do that for a, a single season, that can happen in a game. That one player that just blows up has that insane game that you get that's very rare that can carry your team. The rest of your team doesn't need to do anything. You're probably going to have uh, the top points that week. You know, I think about it uh, a few times. Last year it happened with Julio Jones. He had 300 yards, and he had that on like 12 catches, and he had one TD. Or, I, I, you know, we're, of course, we're all hoping for that player this year to do that for us. And the games that you watch, you see it where maybe in the first quarter, first five minutes, one of your players goes off, gets an 80-yard TD, you know, the first five minutes of the game. And you start to wonder, is that going to be one of those games? And one of those career games where they just blow up. And so, once again, you get a player like that, and they can carry the load for you uh, that week. And so we want to talk about the best single-game statistical fantasy performances of all time by position. And so uh, I think I'll get going here. Yeah. And I want to start with quarterback. Now, this one was tough. There's a lot of quarterbacks out there that it could have came down to. Peyton Manning had 70 TDs. There was others. But it really came down to two. Two quarterbacks that had the best single game totals. And the first one is Y.A. Tittle. Now, a lot of us never heard of the guy, but he had a great game. Back in a time where they didn't throw the ball a lot, he had 505 yards, seven passing TDs, no interceptions. So that was a phenomenal phenomenal game for him and then the other guy that really kind of he was statistically tied for is Drew Brees who also had 505 yards seven TDs now he did have two interceptions so for me the greatest single quarterback performance for me has to be Y8 Tittle simply because they both had the same offenses offensive yards statistics things like that but it came down to the two picks if you're in a league that minus for interceptions that puts Y Tittle over the top with 505 yards Seven TDs, that phenomenal game. Once again, uh, if you had him, you were loving life. So, Christian, now I want to go to the best running back single game of all time. Well, yeah, you know, before we go there, let's talk about, well, I mean, what exactly, how many fantasy points did those score? Well, Y.A. Tittle would have scored you 43 fantasy points, and Drew Brees would have scored 41 fantasy points for you. And that's in a standard low-scoring league. And a lot of leagues, they... They'll give you a lot more points for different things. You're in some leagues that score a lot more than the leagues that I prefer to play in. But that's in a very low-scoring league. So, in fact, they might even score more than that. Yeah, you're right. That's a standard basic score. And I'm in some leagues where you get PPR. You have what this called. Uh, you get the bonus at 100, 125, 150, 175. And so the numbers can really add up. This is just your basic standard scoring. So understand yeah. that when we quote these numbers in your scoring system, they may have been even larger. So, once again, what were those numbers? Uh 43 points for Y.A. Tittle and 41 for Drew Brees. Wow, that's, that's a great unbelievable, game. Unbelievable, man. That right there carries you halfway to your win, basically. All right, so we'll get to the first running back. I believe we have actually two we're going to talk about today, but the first guy is running back Billy Cannon. So he had 330 yards rushing and five touchdowns. That's unbelievable. Those numbers are crazy, crazy high. Phenomenal game. I mean, we were talking about, you talked about Ladanian Tomlinson, the year he had 31 touchdowns. I mean, this is the LT of a single game sort of version. I mean, if you had him on your team, he practically carried you to, straight to a win. He actually scored 54 fantasy points. 54 fantasy points in a low scoring league. In a high scoring league, he could score easily close to 100 points. That's insane. And that's huge numbers. Huge numbers. Just huge. And then just shy of him, we had another running back. Gale Sayers. Now, he only ran for 202 yards, which is quite a bit less, but he had four rushing touchdowns, one receiving, and one returning. Man, the guy could do it all. Now, not every league would give you credit for the return, the kick return for touchdown. Some leagues would give it credit to the defense, but in a typical uh, standard fantasy scoring league, they would give the player credit and not the defense, and so that's why we put that in there. Yeah, um, not, not, not in our leagues, yeah. but... 
not too many people have heard of Billy Cannon. Most people have heard of Gale Sayers. He was a phenomenal player. Uh, his career was cut short by knee injuries. But uh, those are some amazing stats. Yeah, and he only and uh, he scored 52 points. He only came up two sh- two points short of Billy Cannon. That's unbelievable, man. Those are some crazy stats. Because uh, can you imagine if you had both of those guys as your two starting running backs per game? Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, I guess we'll move on then. So I believe you have a wide receiver next. Yeah, the greatest single wide receiver performance in terms of a game goes, uh, and I think this is very very appropriate because a lot of times what will happen is a uh, a guy who maybe is a good player will have a, a great game, but, you know, maybe it's an anomaly. But I think this is a perfect fit, and that goes to Jerry Rice, which is the greatest wide receiver of all time. And so I love that he got this because, it really, he deserves it. He really, um, statistically, is way ahead of any other wide receivers. If you look at it, I believe his numbers are untouchable in terms of yardage, touchdowns, things like that. And his single game of 225 receiving yards and five TDs is insane. That's not including if you're in a PPR or any of those things. Now, what does that convert to fantasy points? Yeah, that converts to 53 fantasy points, which is just insane. That's actually uh, behind Billy Cannon, so that's the second most fantasy points out of all the guys on this list. But 53, and that's not talking if you're in a PPR league, he obviously scored you a lot more than that. You know he got quite a bit of catches. And a lot of leagues also do a ton of bonuses. He may have gotten more bonus points than a standard league would have given out. So it would not be unreasonable to see him scoring up in the 70s and 80s, depending on your league scoring rules. And that's kind of the bit of the problem. We wanted to narrow down what these players were scoring fantasy-wise, but we just couldn't tell because it really depends on what league you're in. But either way, no matter what league you're in, these guys, Jerry Rice especially, are phenomenal. Uh, You know, I'm getting excited. Football season's right around the corner. Uh, we had our first two drafts. I've got two more coming up. I'm getting excited, and I get excited. I'm like a kid in a candy store every Sunday morning. Is this the Sunday I have a huge game? You know, is this the, the player that breaks out for me? And so looking at these numbers makes me excited just to have a guy that would – I mean, if I could get half those out of my receiver, if my guy gets 100 yards and two TDs, you know, I'm happy with that. This is phenomenal. So, mm-hmm. so I think that goes back to you now for tight end, Christian. All right, tight end. Kellen Winslow Sr. So as we know, there's Kellen Winslow Jr. He played uh, for the NFL for a few years for the Browns and for Tampa Bay and kind of played all over the place. But uh, Kellen Winslow Sr., I have to say, is probably the better tight end, especially when you look at this one game, 144 yards receiving and five touchdowns. He actually got the least amount of yards out of anyone on this list. 144 is pretty low when you don't. and, And then you basically remember, oh, he's a tight end. That's still quite a bit for a tight end. But he found the end zone five times. That's insane. Could you imagine being a quarterback, being able to rely on your tight end in the red zone five times for touchdowns? That's insane. But basically, he added up to uh, 40 points for a tight end. That's pretty crazy. At a position where people don't typically draft tight ends early, they often kind of ignore them. 40 points coming out of nowhere from a guy they probably didn't draft too early is kind of insane. Yeah, I think if you put it uh, in its context, contextualize that, you know, that's at a time where Tight ends, yes, there were some out there that could catch the ball, but really, it wasn't like we have today. Today, the game has changed. We have a lot of offensive-minded tight ends back. Then, that wasn't the case. In fact, for many years, a lot of people considered Calvin Winslow to be the best offensive tight end that, that ever played the game. Now, that's changed. We've got some other guys like Tony Gonzalez has come in here, and guys like Mark Witten, and, of course, Gronkowski. But back in the day, and for many, many years, he was considered the best offensive tight end, and those numbers show uh, that he was the real deal. Yeah. That's crazy. So I believe you're up next now. We have a kicker on the list. We do have a kicker. And once again, uh, the lonesome kicker oftentimes will be undervalued. It. But if this guy was on your team, he probably won you the game that week. Now, when we talk about talent for kicker, obviously you can have a great game like this and be a bad kicker. Obviously you are, you're a talented kicker. But for me, it really comes down to the situation, the game situation. Where it is. And for this guy, it's the right situation, good kicker. And that guy is Rob Baronis. 26 points, 8 for 8 in field goals. He also had a 2 for 2 in extra points, and he did hit a 52-yarder, so these weren't just chip shots. He had a really, really good game. But the question for me is, what does that convert to for fantasy points? Yeah, you know, if you had him on your fantasy team, he scored you 32 points. Your kicker. That's another position people often throw away. You know how many drafts I've been to where I've seen people just, oh, I'll take my kicker with the last pick, and whoever I get's fine. I don't care have this kind of negative attitude for him. But I tell you what, if you started Rob Baronis, he pushed you over the edge that week. And no matter what, you were pretty much guaranteed to win your game. So, I mean, that was uh, crazy from a kicker. A lot of people don't expect that. That's more than quarterbacks do on a good week. So, 
Now, before we get to our final position, which is defense. Now, years ago, I have to bring this up. I, I mean, the, well, actually, you know what I do mean. I love to poke you a little bit. And so Christian's playing. He's in the playoffs. Looks like he's going to advance. Most this of his is... players are done. Can I just say, this is um, <laughs> kind of like uh, old fairy tales used to kind of be like ways to teach people lessons. You know, Hansel and Gretel was like, don't go off into the woods, kids. Uh, this is don't underestimate defense. That's what this yes. fairy tale yes. is. That's right. So he's playing the playoffs, Christian is. And he's got a huge lead, and it looks like this game is done. And the only thing this guy had left was basically his defense. His defense I was up, was Seattle. I was up by over 30 points. 30 points. Everybody's done. All these guys got his defense. Christian's already looking ahead to next week to who he plays. And Seattle goes out, and they score like 38 fantasy points. They scored 42. 42. Just crushed them. And oh. so uh, I felt bad for you, and I had to laugh. And don't underestimate a defense. And so who is the greatest defense single-game performance of all time? Yeah, you know, a lot of people aren't expecting this one. But the Cleveland Browns, in uh, 1989, they had the best statistical uh, fantasy defensive week. They scored 52 fantasy points. They got 52. 52 is unbelievable. They scored three touchdowns, got seven sacks, six fumble recoveries, and three interceptions. You know, I joked when I was doing the research to find this defense, I joked, you know, oh, certainly I'll see the Browns. But I figured it was the Browns' offense that was going to be getting shut down. No, wasn't it the Browns against Pittsburgh? It was the Browns against Pittsburgh. So you would think it would be the opposite. If you said Pittsburgh and Cleveland, you'd think, okay, obviously Pittsburgh had a huge game. But, no, it was the Browns that shocked everybody with the greatest single-game defensive performance. The interesting thing was, and I looked at it, it was actually week one of the season. Wow. And so they came right out of the gate firing on all cylinders, and the NFL might have been a little bit scared of them that year. I tell you, that's insane. 52 points. That's crazy for a defense to score that much. So I tell you what, that's, I mean, this is like we were talking about, that's a lesson. Don't underestimate your kicker, your defense, your tight end, man. They can score some serious points. So as we conclude this video, our next video is going to be how do you overcome a bad draft? Now, after the draft, everybody thinks the team is great, but they're not. You know, you have bad drafts, you make bad decisions. So we're going to talk about how you can overcome a bad draft. Check us out on that video. We'll give you a lot of great helpful pointers. All right. Well, we thank you guys so much for watching. As always, subscribe. You have a chance to win a free NFL jersey just for subscribing and watching our content. As always, uh, God bless and thank you guys for watching.